In Creo Simulate, you can create force loads as part of a structural analysis. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I am in an assembly. I want to analyze this. So I will go over to the applications drop down list. And here we have Simulate. By default, it puts me into structure mode. That is fine. Typically, the first thing that I always do is define my constraints, how this is going to be held down. So I can select these three holes. Wait, there's another one around here somewhere. And I use the control key to select them. Here we have them fixed in X, Y, and Z. Rotations are free because this is going to be simulated with solid elements. And for solid 3D elements, well, they don't have rotational degrees of freedom. Let's click the OK button. Now I've got my constraints created in the model. Let's go about creating some force loads. To do that, you will go to the loads group. Here we have the force moment icon. I covered moment loads in another video. In this one, I'm just going to do different ways of configuring your force loads. The first thing that we have up here is the name that you can give it. For the sake of this demonstration, I am not going to change the name. I highly recommend that you change the name, and I'll show you why at the end why that's important. Also, this button allows you to apply different colors to different loads that you create if you want to use that as a method of distinguishing one from the other. By default, it's going to be represented in this orange color. And then you can specify which set it belongs to. You have a default set that is created for you. You can use the new button to create another set. And I'll do that for a different load. Then we have our references drop down list. And you have three choices in here. First is surfaces. And when I'm analyzing a 3D model, I pretty much use only surface loads. Generally, you want to avoid edges, curves, and points in a 3D model that you're going to simulate with 3D elements because an edge has zero thickness. It does have length, but it's got zero thickness. A point has zero area. By applying loads to edges or to points, you can end up with what's called a singularity because stress is load divided by area. For entities that have no area, well, you can end up with artificially high stresses. The only situation in a 3D model where I would apply loads to edges is if I was using shell elements. If I had some thin surface being compressed down to a mid surface, then it's appropriate to apply loads to edges in the model. But in this particular situation, I don't have anything that I can simulate with shell elements. So I will be using surfaces for everything. All right, the first thing that we have in here, what surfaces do you want to apply loads to? And then you can just use the control key to select multiple surfaces if you want. Here I've just picked one surface, just using the individual method. I'll go back and show you boundary and intent and surface sets for some of the other different loads that I'm going to create. Next up, we have the properties. By default, it is defining the load in what's called the WCS or the World Coordinate System. You can see an indication in the lower right hand corner of the orientation of that coordinate system. So for example, if I wanted to apply a load downwards onto that surface, I would use a negative value. Speaking of defining the load, here we have a drop down list where you can specify the components, the direction vector and magnitude, or use points to define the vector and then define the magnitude. So for example, for this one, let's use components and I'm just going to define a force in the X direction. I like to change my units first based on the default units of the model. It wants to define the load in inches pound mass per second squared, or really it's pounds times inches per second squared, which is a mass times an acceleration unit. But hey, that doesn't really feel intuitive to me. Let me use something else that feels a little bit more normal. Hey, let's use Newtons. And again, if I want the force downwards on that surface, I can use a value of negative, let's do negative 100 Newtons on that surface. 
You can use the preview button to see what it's going to look like. Hey, I like that. Let's click the OK button. And you can see a representation of the load on the screen. If I click left on the graphics area, it'll deselect that surface and the load. You can see its representation. If we go over to the model tree, we can expand load constraints. And here's the constraint set that I defined for those different holes. And here's the load set and that one load that I've created so far. Now let's take a look at creating a, another load. And for this one, I'm going to use a different method. Let me see, which part do I want? Do I want this part? No, it's not that part. Let's go with this part. Yeah, I just want to see this part alone. So I will use the isolate button. And if, you, if your screen starts getting cluttered with all these different icons for the symbols, you do have the ability to control the display of entities. If you go to the in graphics toolbar, here's simulation display. And I'm going to go to the loads constraints tab. Let's turn off the display of displacement constraints. Click the OK button. That way my screen is less crowded. All right, let's do another force moment load. And here it is. It's being called load two. Let me click the new button. If I want to put it in a new load set, you can type in the name for the new load set and write in a description if you want. I will click the OK button for that one. And once again, I'm going to apply it to surfaces. But in this particular situation, rather than picking individual surfaces, you can pick the boundary surfaces of an object. So I will pick this particular part. That's why I hit all the other components to make selection easier. And once again, we have the world coordinate system. If you want to use a different coordinate system, well, it helps if it already exists in the model. Let me turn on my coordinate system display. And uh, since I've got that isolated, okay, here we have another coordinate system that we can use. And so I will change to selected and then pick that coordinate system. You can also pick it out of the model tree. And for this particular coordinate system, notice that the Z direction is down. And later on, I'll show you advanced for some of the other different methods in here for defining the load. But let's go to the force dropdown list. This time, instead of using components, I will use direction, vector, and magnitude, where you can define the direction in terms of the x, y, and z components, and then also define the magnitude as well. Hey, let me change this one to pounds force. And so for the direction, let's say I wanted it going at an angle, I can do, let's see, negative one in the z direction and let's go with positive one in the y direction and that'll put it at a bit of an angle let's do for a magnitude let's say that it's 50 pounds force we can click on preview you can see the vector that's defined by these different components of x y and z all right, that looks good. Let's click the OK button for the second load. And there you can see it in here. We can select and say, hey, let's hide that one so that it's no longer visible. For some reason, I hit load one. I don't know why. All right, let's go back and let's see. I had previously made this one the only one visible. Let's make that one the only one hidden and then make it visible just to bring everything else back. And I'm going to turn off my coordinate system display to unclutter the screen. Let's take a look at some of the other different options for a force moment load. And for the next one, I'm actually going to create it in one of the parts. Let me use the drop down list, go to the part in its own separate window. Here I am in part mode because in order to explain the next selection method, I have to explain something in part mode that you can create, which is called a datum reference. And this is something that was added in Pro Engineer 2001. It does have some uses, but probably 99% of all Creo parametric users will never use this command in their life. Hey, you can get by in Creo Simulate without ever using this, but I do 
want to show you one of the options for defining a load. So I'm going to show creating a datum reference. And a datum reference is a datum feature that consists of different references in your model. And if I remember correctly, the idea behind this back in Pro Engineer 2001 was that you could set up these different references and there were that was a quick way of applying rounds or chamfers to the model rather than selecting the entities you could select these different references also there's some weird kind of way of like swapping out one component for another using references or something dealing with that but this feature never really caught on i will show you how to create an intent surface and so for the intent surface let's say that hey i want to apply a load to these two surfaces later on and for some reason, I don't want to pick them manually using the control key. Let's pretend that there were a whole bunch of different surfaces and I needed to define multiple different load cases. And so to save myself time and effort, I could set up this intent reference for the surfaces in the model. Here we have properties. You can change the name if you want. They have this thing called the intent name and the intent name was used for, again, doing some kind of weird operation of you know, swapping something out for another. I can't even remember what it was. It was so long ago. But let's click the OK button. Now, if you take a look in the model tree, here we have the intent reference feature. So now when I go into Creo Simulate, Applications Simulate, when I'm going to define a force load, I can change the radio button from individual to intent. And for the intent, if I hover my mouse over here, you can see from the little tooltip that it's actually picking up the intent surfaces. Yeah, saving me, you know, so many mouse clicks doing that. And then I can say, all right, for the load, maybe I want to define a load in the Z direction. Let's do it in kilonewtons. And it's going to be five kilonewtons in that direction. Hit the preview button. Oh, maybe I want it to be negative five. There we go. That's the way that I want it. Click the OK button. So that's how you can use that reference or that intent option for defining the placement of a load in your model. All right, with that done, let's go back to the previous assembly and continue on in here. Let's see, let me expand this and so you can see the two different load sets. All right, let's go back to force moment and here's load three. Uh, let's create this as a member of load set one. Select it from the drop down list. For the next one, let me show you an option for surface sets. In this particular situation, let me see if I can. Yeah. Let me cancel out of here for a moment and then isolate the pump head because I do want to show you the another selection method. I am hitting the wrong icon over and over again. All right, so let's take a look at how you can use surface sets for defining a force moment load. I will choose force moment, then let's go to the surface sets button, and this brings open the dialog box that you can use for defining surface sets using the advanced selection methods. By default, it's set to individual surfaces, so you can hold down the control key and pick a bunch of different surfaces. If you use the add button, it'll bring open essentially another line in here that helps you construct different surface sets. So I'm gonna start off by selecting an anchor surface. I'm gonna pick a surface from the interior of this particular pipe. And then instead of using the loop surfaces option, I'm going to use seed and boundary. And then for the boundary, I can say, hey, let's pick this surface and hold down the control key in this surface. So in this way, it's gonna start at the seed surface or the anchor surface, and then select all the surfaces going out from the anchor surface to these two boundaries. Let's check the preview button so you can see highlighted in orange. This is a little easier way if you're trying to pick a whole bunch of surfaces, especially on the interior of a model. Let's click the add button to create another set. 
And I'll do the same thing over on the other side. Let's select this surface and it's still set to seed and boundary. I will select one surface, hold down the control key, select the other surface. So this allows me to grab the other surfaces on the interior of that particular channel. Let's click the OK button. So that's how you can use surface sets to construct different surface sets in order to make selection easier. All right, let's keep the world coordinate system. Let's keep everything in here. Let's change from the drop down list. Let's use KIPs. For those of you who are unaware what a KIP is, it's thousands of pounds. And so let's define in this particular case, we want to use a value of 0.5 KIPs. We can hit the preview button to see how we place on those different surfaces. Let's click the OK button. And that way we've got that other load defined in the model. Hey everyone, this video ended up being much longer than I had planned. So I decided to split it into sections. So we'll stop this video here and pick up in a later video. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.